using ultrasound underwater to treat carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, so next we're going to be doing some ultrasound. So I'm using a Chattanooga and I have a carpal tunnel situation. So let me get to edit here. This guy has an acute uh, carpal tunnel going on. So we're going to use the 20% duty cycle. This is a pretty shallow area, so we're going to do 3.3 megahertz. Before the ultrasound works, you actually have to hit the start button, and then you should have either your coupling gel or water, and we're going to be doing this underwater to show you that you can do these things under the water. I'm now going to be bringing up the intensity, and you can see the green light just turned on. So at 20%, there's no risk of a uh, burn going on because it's only 20% um, duty cycle. 100% will give you heat, the deep heat of ultrasound. You don't want to touch the skin while you're doing the ultrasound. You want to just move it in such a way that you don't stay in any one spot too long. And he's not going to usually feel pulsed ultrasound, but I'm going to bring it up. And if you feel anything, just say that's enough. Now, there is a limit with uh, ultrasound under the water. You should not go above three, but this Chattanooga actually maxes out at three. If I was in contact with pulsed ultrasound, the maximum would be 2.5 watts per centimeter squared. Are you feeling anything? A little heat. A little heat. Okay. It's probably due to the fact that I made the water kind of nice and tepid, so it's not usually from the pulsed ultrasound that he'll feel the heat. Usually people feel like a tingling feeling um, and a little pins and needles thing. So mm -hmm. anyway, you can see how fast I'm doing this. Now, if I was working on a Steenar pad, Again, I would want to keep moving. If you stay in any one spot, you risk the bone hurting from the ultrasound hitting the area too long. It vibrates the bone and causes the periosteum to hurt. That's called a periosteal reaction. So right now, I'm just using different patterns. And you can see I'm using a movement pattern of about one to four centimeters per second. That's the speed I'm supposed to use. And not perfect, but it's not hard. And it's not comfortable for the patient, so I don't like to keep them here too long. I usually use a little bit longer bucket in order to get a wrist in there and kind of flat. So now I'm going to actually hit the off button and turn it off. And thank you very much.